All right, check this out. So you guys probably saw those previous videos that I put on YouTube of just casting a GoPro tied on at the end of the fishing line. And it'd be spinning around, spinning around, spinning around. And what I want to try to master is, I want to, I want to make the camera steady, angle one spot and drift down smooth. And then I can smoothly send it down different pools and hopefully get real awesome video footage of steelhead or trout or spawning salmon or whatever, right? So, here's my latest improvement. So take note, you guys, that last video when I put up with all this casting in the water, it's just random chucking a GoPro in, first time ever. So you gotta start somewhere until you get better, right? So I took a coat hanger, lopped the ends off, bent it accordingly, put a little bit of a bend in the dead center to keep that GoPro steady, and then the mount hole was too big for the coat hanger wire, so I bushed that up with electrician's tape, and then I taped it on an angle. So obviously when it's gonna be dragging down the current, Right, it's going to want to be angled down. So then, I'll as well be able to watch the camera going. And, oops. And I can adjust the camera on the mount, right? Depending on just how much of an angle I figure that thing's going to go in the drift. So I'm going to guess that should. I'll bet you it's going to go something like that. I'll try that for the first run, right? Tighten that up. And then the, the string I used, this is the same stuff I used to hang a whole deer quarters in the forest. This is this is that yarn uh, string you get for, for uh, commercial gill nets, netting. I think it's like 800 pound test or something silly, it's crazy. And then I thread it on two floats, obviously, here side. See, the idea is, is to keep it stable. It's stable, going smooth down the river 90. So that means I gotta go to the head of the pool and let it drift down below me. I'm not sure. This probably won't work that great for casting across the pool. Obviously, I'm gonna try it. So I'll be able to as well adjust the depth of the camera with these floats on the line too, right? So here we go. I'm gonna do a test run, share it with you guys, and the next major adventure I go on, which will be another week-long stint, specifically fishing and filming fishing, then I'm gonna to try to, as the steelhead runs get better, it's still a little bit early yet, but as these beautiful BC rivers get full of fish, I want to make a super smoking awesome steelhead video for YouTube. And that's what I'm going to do. And I might catch a fish or two as well, maybe, right? <laughs> but anyway, let's see how this goes. So this is the Birkenhead River. This is the first hole I'm going to stop and give a go. That looks like a pretty good run there. So I'm going to try to sneak up to that. I'm going to stand up there and put it in and get it to drift down the run. Here we go. All right. so. There is steelhead in here, there's steelhead in here and trout in here, and there's a, a small run of spring salmon still left to survive and come up this river. I don't know what's in here right now, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send this camera down a few times to this pool, and then I'm gonna go farther up river. I'm gonna try as many pools as I can until I run out of battery power. I got four of these cameras. We'll see how it makes out.
there's no shortage of getting gear in the rivers, especially when you got uh, waders on. I can't, I'm always surprised how many people lose gear, but look at this big sucker. That's a big chunk of jig. Probably using a salmon. I guess they pinched the barb off. And this one was there too. The old treble barbed hook in a single barbless hook zone. <laughs> Nothing new there. But anyway, time to go back to the shop and plug that video in and see how that stabilizing camera setup I made works. And then uh, I can't wait to go film some fish with it if it's killing it. that thing's picking up my voice okay I'll talk a little louder but I'm gonna share a story with you guys while I'm here so this is the Birkenhead River um, native, native communities have been here since time began um, it's a salmon river it's got sockeye spring salmon steelhead trout you name it, it's in here and they were studying a grizzly bear years ago that call, it was radio collar and this grizzly bear was a freaking monster and they named it Samson I think it was Samson and uh I was actually one time, I was at the head of the Birkenhead River up here a handful of years ago, and out of all the places I've been in BC, that grizzly bear footprint that I saw coming down river in the springtime was absolutely huge. What, probably the biggest BC grizzly bear footprint I've ever seen. That's including everything up north. And then uh, the only other place I've seen bigger grizzly footprints is on Kodiak Island. But anyway, so to give you an idea of the intelligence of these things, they radio track that bear. He'd come out in springtime, and he'd go all the way right down here, down the Birkenhead River, and they had him sleeping in bushes within 30 meters of the houses in Mount Curry by the gas station. And nobody ever saw him. How crazy is that? How intelligent is that? You got a monster, probably close to a 10-foot grizzly bear, sleeping in the bushes 30 meters from a house where kids are playing was playing soccer and shit right nobody ever saw him he never bothered anybody and i guess he went down to the river and he fished at nighttime and he went and slept in the bushes at daytime right next to all the people and nobody ever saw him how's that for some cool freaking intelligence